Hello, I'm, I'm Adam, Micropilogist. Let us show you what we are going to talk about. Imagine that you are working in the lab and looking at bacteria under the microscope when you notice something strange and you think to yourself, oh, this bacteria has characteristic I have never seen before. How can I deal with this? But there is good news. I'm here today to give you some points on how to deal with it. In case like that, the first thing we need to understand is taxonomy. Taxonomy will show you how to distinguish the new species from others and will assist you in naming it in Latin. And when we discuss taxonomy, we must also discuss classification, nomenclature, and identification. So the first thing is classification, which is the mechanism for classifying microorganisms into groups or taxa based on morphologic, physiologic, and genetic characteristics. All living organisms are classified according to phylogenetic tree that includes domains, kingdoms, phyla, classes, orders, families, genera, and species. And when it comes to microbiology, Prokarya, Arcaria, and Eukarya are the domains. Microbiologists typically refer to microorganisms by their family, genera, species. In family, we have genus of microorganisms, and the suffix SA is add to the end of the bacterial name with the exception of Enterobacteriaceae, which is called after the enteric group of bacteria rather than the species type. And when we move to the species, we found that species belong to the same genus have a number of common characters. And the species refers to a group of bacteria strains that share physiological genetic characteristics. And examples for the subspecies are biotype, serotype, and genotype. The naming of microorganisms according to standards and guidelines laid out in the International Code of Nomenclature of Bacteria or Bacteriological Code is known as nomenclature and by nomenclature organisms are globally recognized. The binomial aspects provide Latinized name at all levels, the most commonly used being the genus and species levels, which is as previous state, are the most commonly used. For genus, we use uppercase for the first letter and lowercase for the species. And when we talk about identification, we will mean the process of identifying the key characteristics of microbes and after those characteristics have been determined the profile is compared to those of other microbes that have been previously characterized after that the organism can be allocated to the most appropriate taxonomy and given appropriate genus and species designation and when we want to determine a microorganism's identity, a variety of approaches and criteria are used. Those techniques are usually classified into one of two categories, genotypic or phenotypic. To identify an organism genetically, we have two ways. The first one is based composition ratio of DNA. For example, let me say one inside to scene component. We have two organisms. The first one has 50% guanine cytosine component and the second one has 25% guanine cytosine component. Obviously, these two organisms are not closely linked to each other, so by this way we determine the relatedness between organisms. The second way is based sequences of nucleic acids, for example, whole genome sequences or RNA sequences, which is the most stable to determine similarity or differences between organisms. Phenotypic identification divided into several categories. The first one is microscopic and macroscopic morphology. For example, size and pigmentation of the colony or shape of microorganism under the microscope. The second thing is staining characteristic. And when we say staining, we mean an organism capacity to stain with specific dyes and reagents 
and uh, for bacterial identification staining is combined with microscopic morphology the third thing is nutrition and environment requirements. Some organisms need high temperature to growth and some organisms need special nutrition like oxygen, nitrogen and carbon. The fourth thing is resistant profile which is the most important because antimicrobial resistant are global problem and uh, we are going to talk about it in details later. The last one is gemotaxonomic properties, analytically determining chemical elements of the cell such as jovic acid and protein profile. Please, if you have a question, put in a comment, I will respond to you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, your input is important to us and help us develop.